Hello my grade 7 students, welcome to our 4th quarter PE lesson. And our most essential learning competencies for this lesson are Describes the nature and background of dance Analyze the effects of exercise and physical activity participation on fitness And the last one, keeps the importance of winning and losing this video class will help you discover and analyze how festival dances play an essential role in developing one's personal fitness as we continue to nurture and promote our own culture. After going through this video, you are expected to identify the meaning and nature of local Philippine festival dances, differentiate festival dances that have religious influences and non-religious influences, Appreciate festival dances as part of the Filipino culture by accomplishing the given activities. So now, before we proceed with our lesson, let's have first our activity 1. In the previous lesson, you have learned about folk dance. You probably know that folk dance refers to the dances created and performed collectively by the ordinary people. From the preceding topic, the folk dance tinikling was introduced and explained to you. Can you recall some of the things from the topic? Now, identify the correct term. You need to read and understand the given description and arrange the jumbled letters. Are you ready? Number 1. A popular folk dance from Visayan Islands and came from the word tikling. Number 2. This dance is a favorite in the Visayan Islands, especially in the province. Number three, the girls wear this costume in Tinikling dance. Number four, Tinikling came from the word blank, a bird with long neck and long legs. Five, this used as a pole in dancing Tinikling. This usually comes in pair. So, I guess now you're done with your answer. Now let's proceed with our topic, the nature of festival dances. We have first, the cultural festival with religious influences. Religious festival dance. These are dances characterized by movements showing reverence to a religious icon belief to have interceded in their personal life. The Philippines, where majority of its people are Catholics, celebrate fiestas pompously and with so much giddy. To them, this celebration is an expression of thanksgiving for a bountiful harvest and for a favor or request granted to them through divine intercession. The following are some of these dances. One example of the festival with religious influence is the Ati Atihan Festival. The Ati Atihan Festival is a feast held annually in January in honor of the Santo Nino or the Infant Jesus, concluding on the third Sunday in the island and town of Calibuaklan in the Philippines. The name Ati Atihan means to be like Atas or make believe Atis. Atas were the primary settlers in the islands according to history books. They too are the earliest settlers of Panay Island where the province of Aklan is situated. The festival consists of tribal dance, music, accompanied by indigenous costumes and weapons, and parade along the street. Christians and non-Christians observe this day with religious processions. 
It has inspired many other Philippine festivals including Sinulog Festival of Cebu and Dinagyang of Iloilo, both adaptations of Ati Atihan Festival. The second festival dance with religious influence is the Moriones Festival. Moriones is an annual festival held on Holy Week on the island of Marinduque, Philippines. The Moriones are men and women in costumes and masks replicating the garb of biblical Roman soldiers as interpreted by local folks. The Moriones or Moriunan tradition has inspired the creation of other festivals in the Philippines where cultural practices or folk history is turned into street festivals. The participants use Moriun masks to depict the Roman soldiers and Syrian mercenaries within the story of the Passion of the Christ. The mask was named after the 16th and 17th century Moriun helmet. The Moriunis refers to the mask and costume penitents who march around the town for seven days searching for Lunginus. This is a folk religious festival that reenacts the story of Saint Lunginus, a Roman centurion who was blind in one eye. This week-long celebration starts on Holy Week and Monday. The third example of the festival which has a religious influence is the Dinagyang Festival. The Dinagyang is a religious and cultural festival in Iloilo City, Philippines held on the fourth Sunday of January or right after the Sinulog in Cebu and Atiatihan in Aklan. It is held both to honor the Santo Nino and to celebrate the arrival of Panay of Malay settlers and the subsequent selling of the island to them by the Atis. Next is the Sinulog Festival. The famous Sinulog Festival of Cebu City is held every year of the third Sunday of January. The festival is characterized by a very long parade with many groups of persons dressed in colorful costumes, finding their way through the streets while dancing the Sinulog. To distinguish the festival from the popular Ati Atihan, this festival is characterized by a different dance. The Sinulug dance is now the traditional and ritual dance in honor of the Santo Nino. The dance is accompanied by the sound of the drums. The Sinulug was danced by the locals in honor of their wooden statues in the period before the Cebuanos were baptized. Later on, after the image of the famous Santo Nino was brought to Cebu and the Catholic faith was established in the region, the dance was made a part of the yearly fiesta in honor of the Santo Nino. Another festival which is a religious festival is the Feast of Our Lady of Pina Francia. The Feast of Our Lady of Pina Francia is celebrated on the third Sunday of September in Naga City, Bicol. The feast day is preceded by a novena. Nine days of prayer in honor of the Virgin on the first day. The image of the Virgin, a copy of Bandona in Pina Francia, Spain, is brought from its shrine to the Naga Cathedral where the novena is held. On the last day, the image is returned to a shrine following the Naga River Road. Thousands of candles from devotees in boats escorting the image light, the colorful evening position. When the barge reaches its destination, the devotees shout, Viva la Virgin! Long live the Virgin! And the image is brought back in the procession to the cathedral. The last festival which has the religious influence is the Pahiyas Festival, one of the country's biggest and most colorful harvest festival every May 15th in Lokban, Quezon, along with the harvest festivals of the towns of Tayabas, Saria, Gumaca, and Tiaung. These are the Philippines' known harvest festivals to honor San Isidro Labrador, the patron saint of farmers, known as the Pahiyas. The festival is deeply rooted in the traditional celebration of the town's folk in thanksgiving for bounty harvest. 
decorations called keeping, a leaf-shaped and multicolored rice paste wafers that are used to decorate the facades of the homes along with fruits and flowers from nature. So now let's talk about the cultural festival with non-religious influence. Filipinos who are known to be fun, loving people always find time to celebrate any occasion, be it personal, family, or even those that will require the whole community to commemorate an event or acknowledge an icon, which became the source of inspiration, identity, or origin. The celebration is performed along the streets as dancers perform rhythmical movements accompanied by music instruments. The dance culminates in a grand presentation where dancers display their skills with prowess, excellent choreography, and colorful props in full tapestry. Here are some of the dances. Lanzones Festival is an annual Thanksgiving celebration for Camigin Island's bountiful harvest. The town of Mambahao holds the feast during the third week of October, in time for the season of the tropical fruit Lanzones. The province of Camigin is known for having the sweetest Lanzones among abundant sources of the fruit along the north-central coast of Mindanao. The locals and tourists enjoy this week-long celebration with a lineup of activities showcasing the rich culture of Camigin, street dancing, Grand Lanzones Parade, product exhibits, and beauty pageants. The next festival which has no religious influence is the Mascara Festival. The Mascara Festival of Bacolod City is one of the biggest festivals in the Philippines held on the fourth Sunday of October. Believe it or not, the festival has been giving local and international visitors the chance to have fun on the streets of Bacolod for over 30 years now. This annual festival, which is similar to Brazil's Rio Carnival, literally translates to many faces, and it's celebrated every October in Bacolod. Because of the smiling faces of the mask, Bacolod City got the nickname of the City of Smiles. The Mascara Festivals can trace its roots back in the 1980s and was born out of a crisis. It was during the time when the province's main livelihood, sugar, was priced an all-time low because of alternatives introduced in the market. It was also the time when a tragic ferry accident happened, which carried mostly people from the province including those from prominent families of Bacolod. Another non-religious festival is the Ibalong Festival. Ibalong Festival is a colorful, week-long event that draws both locals and foreigners to experience the culture and lifestyle of the people of Ligaspi City, Albay. The annual festival's name was inspired by the popular legend that regales visitors with tales of the city's pre-colonial past. The festival is celebrated in August. Unlike many of the festivals in the Philippines, the Ibalong Festival doesn't take off religion or harvest. The festival is based on the Ibalong epic, which tells of the story Ibalon, who was joined the three legendary heroes, Batlog, Handyong, and Bantong reside. The three heroes read the town of monsters, save the people from a great flood, and laid the loss of the land.
The last festival which has no religious influence is the Kalilangan Festival. It is an annual festivity that is celebrated in General Santos City and takes place in the month of February. In the vernacular, Kalilang means to celebrate and what the Kalingan Festival celebrates is the tradition of sharing, hospitality, altruism that is part of the cultural heritage of Mindanao. Aside from the religious and non-religious festival, we also have the Film Festival. The Film Festival is a gathering of artists, filmmakers, directors, scriptwriters, and other people involved in filmmaking, where the motion pictures captured in films, which are made to entertain, educate, and inform the audience, are shown on screen for public viewing. Film rating from the authorities is required to suit the film to the viewing public. Metro Manila Film Festival Philippines or MMFFP, the Metro Manila Film Festival, is an annual film festival held in Metro Manila, Philippines. The festival which runs from December 25 on Christmas through New Year's Day and into first weekend of January in the following year focuses on Filipino films during the course of the festival movie theaters show only films that are approved by its jurors and exclude foreign films except in 3D theaters and IMAX theaters it is one of the two Filipino major film festivals to exclude movies out of the country in a week-long period the other being the Pista ng Pelikulang Pilipino happening during August. The annual event began with the 1975 Metro Manila Film Festival during which diligin mo ng hamog ang uhaw ng lupa. Water the Thirsty Earth We Do by Augusto Benaventura won the Best Film Award. Another type of festival is the Flower Festival. This festival commemorates the season of blooming as it pays tribute to the blooms and lush found in a particular place. In some places where flowers abound, this festival is a way of expressing their gratitude by means of floral offering. An example of Flower Festival is the Panagbenga. Panagbenga Festival A Panagbenga Festival is a month-long annual flower occasion occurring in Baguio City. The term is of Cancane origin, meaning season of blooming. The festival held in February was created as a tribute to the city's flowers and as a way to rise up from the devastation of the 1990 Luzon earthquake. The word Panagbenga is a word from the local Kankanai language, which means blooming. The first festival was held in 1996 and was used as a means of recovering after the devastation that Baguio got from the earthquake. So class, before we will proceed in our activity 2, let's review our locomotor and non-locomotor movements which was used in the different festivals being presented. And now we have two kinds of basic movements necessary for expanding physical skills, the locomotor movements and the non-locomotor movements. Locomotor movements are movements where the body travels through space from one location to another. Locomotor movements primarily use the feet for support. However, the body can travel on other parts such as the hands and feet.
Here are some examples of locomotor movements. Walk. Move at a regular pace by lifting and setting down each foot in turn, never having both feet off the ground at once. Run. Move at a speed faster than a walk, never having both or all the feet on the ground at the same time. Gallop is a forward side movement from footsteps forward with a little spring followed by the transfer of body weight to the back foot. As the back foot receives the body weight, the front foot repeats the forward step movement. Jump to spring clear of the ground or other support by a sudden muscular effort. Leap is a locomotor movement characterized by a takeoff on one foot, a long flight, face, and a landing on the opposite foot. Hop. Hop is a springing action that involves taking off from the one foot and landing on the same foot. Skip is a step and a hop on one foot followed by a step and a hop on the other foot. Roll. Roll is a complete rotation of the body that is usually made on the ground. Crab walk is an intense upper body and core exercise that uses your own body weight for resistance. Learning how to do the crab walk will help you burn fat and tone your back, arms, shoulders, core, legs, and hamstrings. Slide. Slide is a similar to a gallop performed with the right or left foot leading. The rhythm is an even, long, short, long, that is the step, and short is the landing. Now let's talk about the non-locomotor movements. Non-locomotor movements are body movements done in stationary position. Executing stationary movements properly helps promote and good posture and body mechanics. Here are some examples of non-locomotor movements. Stretching is extending the body or limbs especially beyond normal or proper limits. We have the bending, a movement of the joint turning to curve or angular position. Swaying, a moving from side to side, shifting f weight from one side to the other side in a smooth fashion. Swinging is a moving back and forth rhythmically. Twisting is turning of a body part on the axis. Turning is a circular movement of a body part. Pulling is a forceful action that moves an object closer to the body.
Pushing is an action that moves an object away from the body. Now, why is locomotor and non-locomotor important? These are the skills classified as fundamental because they create the foundation for developing safety skills and everyday utilitarian skills. The acquisition of basic non-locomotor skills is likely to contribute to the performance of related activities like the different activities in Philippine festivals. So now let's have our activity 2. Identify the locomotor and non-locomotor movements from the different festivals. You may use another separate sheet of paper for this activity. And for your activity 3, identify the differences between the Sinulog and Panagbenga festival dance according to their categories, their props, costume, and music. So before we will proceed with your performance task, Let's discuss first the elements of dance which are going to apply during your activity. Elements of dance. The elements of dance are the foundational concepts and vocabulary that help students develop movement skills and understand dance and artistic practice. Dance is one of the most widespread and popular artistic expression in the world together with music. It is based on the harmonic Movement of the human body, usually synchronized with music, to express emotions, feelings by means of the non-verbal communication. It is currently used in multiple contexts such as religion and entertainment. The components of the dance are very dependent on each other, since each one depends to a great extent on the other so that the final execution of the dance piece is perfect. Body the center of any dance is the dancer, who is in charge of executing the movements with a rhythm and tenacity necessary to convey a feeling to those who witness the dance. Each part of the body is important in the dance, the trunk, the extremities, the easy expressions, and the postures must be complemented correctly to obtain a natural and pleasant movement in sight. Action the dance itself consists in the realization of movements. The action refers to these movements which can be as subtle as turning the neck or a hand, or as elaborate as jumping, tumbling, and even running around the stage. There must be a balance between action and pose. The next one is the space. The scenario or context where the dance takes place will affect the viewer's vision. The space may vary in color, composition, and size. The decorative elements or elusive to the dance reverberate in the necessary harmony between dance, dancer, and stage. Time. The rhythm and repetition patterns of a dance are called time. This element that dictates the only the duration of the dance, but the speed in the execution of its steps, the rhythm of a dance can be previously choreographed or be free, giving the dancer freedom to move at will. And the last one is the energy. In combination with time and action, the energy corresponds to the degree of tension or fluidity with which the steps are executed. Energy is considered as the most complex of the elements of dance. It can take years to develop, even if a dance is performed with an appropriate rhythm and movements according to it, the energy can convert the dance from rigid to fluid and with naturalness. The talent of the dancer has a great influence on this aspect. The elements of dance are very important, especially in your choreography. So the application of the elements of dance is very necessary. So now let's have your performance task. Choose one festival dance for this activity, applying the elements of dance. 
What are you going to do is to create a video, a simple festival dance routine, 2 to 3 minutes. You can do it alone or with your family member. Observe utmost care while doing the activity to avoid injuries and use the music, props and costume you prepared from your music lesson and arts activity. While doing this activity, you have to follow the following rubrics. So now, we are now done with our fourth quarter lesson in physical education class. Hope you learned a lot from our lesson today. How locomotor and non-locomotor being used as the sources of steps in festival dances and how the elements of dance being applied. Bye bye class and see you in our next lesson.